What's going on everybody? This is Afro Think Tank. Today's topic is going to be about Donald Trump being the nasty medicine that we needed. All right, it was much needed. Donald Trump was a much needed nasty medicine that America needed. And I'm glad it happened. Let me explain to you what I mean by that. I'm not glad that, I'm not happy about any of Trump's policies. I'm not happy about anything that he's done. I'm not happy about his racism or his inactions. I'm not happy about any of that stuff. What I am happy about is how things have been exposed. Okay, let me explain. For many decades now, for many decades, when black folks were saying we were being killed in the streets by the police, when we were saying we were being um, discriminated against, when we were shouting to the mountaintops for anybody to hear that, hey, us black people in America, we're going through a lot. You know, we're being, we're being discriminated against. We're being killed. We're being oppressed. A lot of people just chucked it up to a bunch of lazy black folks who don't want to work or a bunch of lazy black folks who just complain all the time and want to blame somebody else for their own problems. A bunch of uh, criminal thug black people who just don't know how to follow the rules and regulations and they're not respectful and that's why things happen to them. That's, that is the excuse that the power structure has used to keep our voices silent. And we've been fighting against that for a very long time. You know, but when Trump came, right, you see, when Trump came, because he's not part of the, see, he's not part of the establishment. He is a golden spoon fed child who, um, who daddy, you know, who's living off his daddy's legacy. Even though his daddy was a piece of shit, his granddaddy was a piece of shit, you know, and he's a piece of shit, you know, just like a lot of other people in his family are pieces of shit, just runs in a family, right? But. Ever since he wiggled his way into power, right? He wiggled his way into power. He's been exposing a lot of things. Because of his actions, he's for, he's emboldened the people that we told y'all. We've been telling y'all. We say, hey, man, the police are doing this shit on purpose. They're targeting us. We've been telling the world. And the world been not paying attention to us. But see, what Trump did, he emboldened those very same people that was doing that. So then instead of doing it behind closed doors... Or instead of doing it and hiding it, they stopped hiding it. They got really emboldened. So they came out from the dark into the light. And they started doing it because their president said it was okay. Their president encouraged it. So they stepped out. You know, they stepped out. And then they saw they had friends over here. And they had friends over here. And they was like, oh, this is, you know, we're getting, we getting America back. And what they mean by that is they getting America back, back in the 50s when white people had 100% full control and power over everybody when it was a, a utopia in the middle class where everybody was making good money the white folks were making good money in the manufacturing plants black folks were too you know but m white folks they was good they can afford to do things they can afford to to, to live a decent life and they were getting paid the government was doing what they were supposed to do for them okay and then somehow when when the rich people Decided they was gonna siphon more more money from the the people you know from the poor people from the peasants you know they came up with this master plan to blame everybody else right yeah it's not us it's, it's those people over there right so of course they start creating they started to create this group of people right who are already disgruntled some of them are already racist you know some are not racist but some are already racist some some are just disgruntled people who feel like coal's coming back you know where's coal mines you know all these old jobs that's never coming back some the very disgruntled people who get treated like garbage there are a lot of white folks in america you know whether it be racist not racist poor who get treated like garbage they, the government don't care about them just like they don't care about us but the difference is they get that special privilege they were promised this special privilege and this special privilege doesn't seem to be panning out for them anymore right so the Trump is saying, hey, we're going to give you this special privilege back. I'm going I'm to scream it to the mountaintops that, hey, make America great again, which is code for make white America dominant and great again, period. That's what it means. So the whole world for four years has been watching blatant racist act after racist act after racist act, right? And then when the combination of all of the hard work the republicans did to create this low low information group of racist 
supporters, when they came down to D.C., because they were told to come down to D.C. by their leader, when they came and gathered, and then when their leader told them to go to the Capitol, which is the people's house, the people's house, right? These people who call themselves patriots, they're not patriots for America. They're patriots towards their own people, their superiority, their nationalism. They're patriots towards their group of people. They're not American patriots. They're not, right? They just like to throw that word around. We witnessed, the whole world witnessed, these same people who said, oh, that Kaepernick, you know, Kaepernick kneeling was disrespectful for the troops, that that uh, kneeling is disrespectful to the troops and the police officers and Blue Lives Matter and all that stuff. Remember all that stuff? Remember when they were coming out, when Black Lives Matter was protesting? Remember when they was coming out and they was telling the police officers that they're to protect them, to back them up, back them up, and they were bringing their weapons and they were acting like there was some sort of auxiliary uh, militia force that was there to back the police up. Remember that? Remember all of that? Now, we witnessed just recently these very same people who say they love the police and love the military, right? We witnessed them attack the police and the military, the people's house, and, their, and the representatives that were democratically elected in the, uh, in the Capitol. We watched them do that. Insurrection. We watched an actual coup attempt happened they went there with intent to do harm to delay disrupt change the political will of the people we watched them do that all right we also watched that even those very same police officers that they so-called care about you know that they killed one of them they killed right they killed one you know the police officers that they care about even some of the police officers the capital police officers who were working that day was on the protester side and they they basically they they were traitors to their own their own people they were traitors to their own brethren in arms and they let those people in they let those people in so the whole world saw that two i think two capital police have been put on suspension 15 are being investigated we got people we got police officers coming out the woodwork where all all of a sudden the world is shocked that our police force and our military force and our intelligent agencies are being are being infiltrated by racists or white nationalists like it's a big shock see black folks we already knew this we've been saying it the fbi literally had a program the fbi made it their business to shut us to shut black people down and to kill all our leaders we literally know that's american history we know the government does this to us right so it's no surprise we've been screaming it from the mountaintops but now all of a sudden I'm watching the news. You got these analysts and these former national security advisors. They're all like, oh, we uh we have to do FBI's investigating how many, basically how many racist people are in all these departments. Now all of a sudden all these state police departments are doing internal investigations about racist groups, racist organizations that have infiltrated their police departments and their or their security forces or whatever. Like it like like it's something new. We knew this. We've been saying it. And it's not that they infiltrated, they've always been there. They've been part of the fabric of the police department, of the intelligence agency, of the military. They've been there. They've always been there. It's just that the powers that be were able to veil it. They, they were able to keep it, you know, behind a thin wall, a small wall of deniability, a small wall of nuance when it comes to talk. Oh, well, it's a few bad apples. Yeah, blah, 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 mental illness, blah, blah, blah. But now you can't do that. Everything's on the table. We see it all. It's all laid out. The clear difference between how the police who were doing their jobs reacted towards all those middle-aged white folks, middle-aged white folks out there disgruntled because they lost a fair and square election. Like, you know, I, I didn't see any tear glass. I didn't see any rubber bullets. There was none of that. None of that. I didn't see anybody getting choked out. Yeah, somebody got killed. You know, it did happen. You know, several people got killed. But imagine if that was Black Lives Matter. It would have been a massacre. There have been hundreds of people dead. It been, the news would have been talking about uh, Muslim guerrilla terrorists in, in the African-American community. It would have been some crazy. It would have been insane. But now all they're talking about, oh, we got to fix this. These people are disgruntled. Uh, let's blame it all on Trump. You know, like they're trying to pass the buck, you know. While the FBI is out here, they're out here. They're trying to find these people because they're embarrassed now. They're embarrassed because the whole world just saw the, the place that's supposed to be the most secure building the most secure place, the people's house in America, the people's house got ransacked like that.
The Capitol Police uh, Command tried to call for backup several times and got denied by their by their brethren. OK, so even amongst the police officers and amongst the Capitol Police and the federal police, they don't even have they have different loyalties. You got some that's loyalty loyal to the to the to the to the nationalism, national the national movement, their movement, their little, you know, bring the South, the South rise again, you know. And then you got the ones that want that's actually gonna do their job, that's patriotic, they took an oath and they mean it. All those veterans who got caught up going up in there, they took an oath. They forgot about that oath. Because they want to worship a person instead of instead of being patriotic to your country. Right? They want to be patriotic and they want to worship an individual. Right, which is not what you're supposed. I mean, it's not what you're supposed to do, right? So, all I'm saying is the whole world knows now. We don't even have to talk about it. This clear as day. We got video. Everything's recent. Same the police department. Same, same, same government. Two different contrasts between the way they treat Black Lives Matter and and so-called Antifa, which means anti-fascist and a fascist organization called uh, the Donald Trump freaking clown posse that's a fascist organization and they support a fascist even though they say they're not fascist but they're doing all things that fascists do all right so it's the medicine we need to because if hillary clinton honestly let's be let's be real if hillary clinton would have got elected that veil that we've been talking about that we couldn't get past that wall that thin wall of acknowledgement of what's really happening it would have still been up hillary clinton it'd been a big hurrah because she was been the first female president and then things, business has been on as usual. Black folks still getting shot up, killed. Nobody caring. Nobody doing anything about it. No national conversation, right? All the little militia groups would still have been doing their thing, building their arsenals, planning attacks and shit, and doing all this crazy stuff. You know, that's what they would have did. And and we all and and we would have been asleep. The world would have been asleep. We'd have just moved on, right? While all this stuff is going on. But no, with Trump, was that medicine? We needed. We needed all the cards to be laid out on the table. Now you can't put it back. You can't put, you can't, you can't pick anything up. The cat's out of the bag. Everything's on the table. The whole world sees it. We, we can, in good conscience, we can't go and tell any other country that they need to deal with their humanitarian situations in their group. They can't even deal with the humanitarian situation here with their own people, right? It showed the hypocrisy of America. You know, the, the, the fake, the fake American dream that once was, but not, not anymore. The idea of America. See, the idea of America is great. It's a great idea. The problem is it hasn't been implemented correctly. Its foundation is, is has not been acknowledged. The foundation of America is slavery and genocide, period. And its history is racism, period. And its present is racism. And until we eliminate that or get rid of the culture of racism, at least because you'll never get rid of racism. All right? Racism will always be there. But when you eliminate the people who who um the people who uh practice this culture of white supremacy and racism and nationalism when you take that group and you make it smaller and smaller and you make it irrelevant you know two things will happen the country will change because the the the, the country will change because we will because that's what we want the majority of americans want change we, we want to live we want to have good health care we want to be treated equally we just that's all we want we don't want nothing special just give us the basic rights to live and be free and be equal, right? That's not what these people want. So their culture, their popular culture is being small, is being crushed, right? So another thing that's gonna happen, which is inevitable, is that now that they're being crushed, because when you lose power, when you once held a lot of power and you lose power, you tend to take on guerrilla tactics, you know, to try to do certain things, to try to inspire people you think to be on your side, you try to rally your, your folks up around the country so you do small things you got lone wolves you got small little organizations with crazy people that's going to do stuff something's going to happen clearly they have the capability to do it the will to do it and they got the means to do it and they're going to do it just like the taliban just like al-qaeda just like isis just like al-shabaab just like uh boko haram it's the same thing these 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 trumpers are this, just like those people give them a gun and they'll go over there and they'll shoot some innocent person in the name of patriotism and their own ideology. So, yeah, Trump was a good thing. Not really, he wasn't a good thing in the short term, but in the long term, in the long term, it's good. Because we don't have to say it anymore. Black folks don't have to scream it from the mountaintops. Because we all know. Now, the question is, what are we going to do about it? Now that everybody knows, now that all the cats are out the bag, 
and they're running around, what are we going to do about it? That's the next step. So that's why I say Trump is that nasty medicine that we needed. And I'm glad it happened. Because now we all woke. Because it, it affects us. See, most presidents, when they do things, it doesn't actually affect. You know, we don't really feel the difference, you know, that much, you know, in our own personal lives. But Trump affects everybody's personal life. Every single American has been affected by Trump's decisions. And they felt it and it hurt. Every single one of us. So that's woken everybody up. To the point where now they're paying attention to politics. These younger people are paying attention to who they elect, right? They're more aware about what's happening in politics because they don't want this to happen again. All right? So some good stuff should come out of this, hopefully. All we got to do is make it out of a few more days. This guy's still in office. But best believe, he ain't going nowhere because he's a narcissist and he likes attention. So what he's going to do is he's going to find another platform. He's going to find some way to communicate with his people. And he may become worse outside of politics. Who knows? But we don't know. We just got to keep our head on the swivel, stay safe, you know, be aware of our surroundings and what's going on and just, you know, and live our lives the best way we can and try to do the best we can to get, you know, to, to, to grab that American dream, you know, whatever peace we can get. You know what I'm saying? So that's all I want to say for now, guys. This is Afro Think Tank. Learn something, teach something. I'm out.